what does the future have in store for this us here? Where, where, where are we going? What, what's next? Can, can we upload our consciousness into a jar? Can we live forever? Is <laughs> Don't open that jar! <laughs> it's your great-great-grandfather! You kill him! <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I don't think we can upload ourselves into the cloud. I, I, I worry about that whole way of thinking. I think it's this, it's this the latest manifestation of kind of tech bro hubristic singularity nonsense that, that we don't really need. So if we're saying that somewhere on the line, Anil, artificial intelligence will have consciousness. I mean, David Chalmers seems to think that that will be coming in a few years' time. We've got the silicon intelligence that we're, we're very familiar with, but there is a synthetic biological intelligence. Is the biological intelligence more disposed to sort of following the human thing of consciousness? I don't think, personally, and I am a bit, I, so David Chalmers and I have had conversations about this, and I think we disagree a bit about mm. this. So I personally okay. don't think that AI made out of silicon is likely to be conscious. I think it might be very persuasive to us that it is, but I think there's some good reason to think that it, that it won't be. This doesn't mean that it's impossible to build synthetic consciousness. The question is just how similar does it have to be to biological consciousness? Does it have to be made out of the same stuff? Does it have to be made out of neurons or carbon? Or could you do it in another material? I think it's an open question. I think artificial consciousness for me is much more likely to arise not in the circuits of some future language model, but in laboratories that are building things like organoids, brain organoids, which are made out of the same stuff. So you know, these brain organoids, they're made out of actual neurons, human neurons in many cases, hmm. derived from, from stem cells. So here, like a whole level of uncertainty goes out the window. It's made out of the same stuff. So we don't have to worry about whether the stuff matters or whether consciousness is something that a computer could have. But the reason we get less worked up about it is because, you know, at least to so far, these organoids, they don't really do anything very interesting. They just sit there in a dish. And so we don't, we don't think they're conscious. You know, our psychological biases are not, are not exercised in the same way. But as they get more complicated, as they start doing stuff, I think they're, that's where we have the real ethical worries. I, if I come to this as a physicist, I will not ultimately distinguish between a neuron firing electrochemically and silicon firing electric. Who cares? Who cares what it's made of if all that matters is the electrochemical signal? So this, this distinction that people are making feels very needlessly artificial to me. I mean, you know, as a physicist, there's a big difference between what's happening in a silicon chip and what's happening in a brain. It's not... I, I, I agree, but there wouldn't have to be in principle, is all I'm saying. Once, If I get the full electrochemical mapping of your brain and then create it in silicon, I've just duplicated your brain. And, and I'm doing it without carbon. I'm using... Who cares? I care. <laughs> I care. But there's a, there's a reason I care. There's a reason I care. And it's because you've, you've helped yourself to this kind of thought experiment that that... That you've just said, well, in principle, it could be done. Like you could just duplicate everything that's going on in your brain in silicon. But actually, you know, it may not be possible to do that. For instance, take the Golden Gate Bridge. You, if you try to make that out of cheese, you're not going to be able to do it. You know, the bridge has to be made out of a certain material that has certain physical properties. And the stuff inside our brains have certain physical properties that silicon doesn't. Um, if you think all that matters are neurons that exchange spikes, action potentials, you know, in a digital way, then you might think, well, okay, we've abstracted away from the messy, fine details of biology. So then silicon should be fine. But there's actually much more going on in the brain than just this digital exchange of spikes. And if that stuff matters, like things like electrical fields, neurotransmitters, all of this stuff, chemicals washing around... Then there are things that, you know, you just can't even in principle replicate in silicon. Well, I would just say we're not there yet, but I wouldn't preclude it. That's all. Because, you know, it, it's like you look at, look at things mechanically. Brain just happens to be a more complex example of other things. There are organs we have or joints. We can replace your knees. 
your hips. You know, we can replace things that were functioning in your body. And in another era, we would have said, oh, the human body is unreplaceable. It, it's got you know millions of years of evolution and it is perfect or whatever. No, get rid of it. You've got cartilage missing, right? So I, I, I have more confidence in the power of physics in this equation. Than, and it could just be a matter of how big are your tools to move around molecules to configurations that you might need or want. If you, if you allow engineering at that level well then of course you can you can duplicate the brain but you might still not be able to make it yeah you know, as a silicon chip it it might have to be made out of the same kinds of building blocks in order to have the same kind of functional properties like and at that level it's biological right at that level it's right. biological that level. because there's, there's another way to put it which is i think perhaps more intuitive like computers that the power of computers is they're designed to be the kinds of things for which you can completely and easily separate what they do from what they are made of. What they do and what they are is different. That's why you know software mm-hmm. that runs on my computer will run on somebody else's. That's actually a very, very special and rare property that you don't find in nature in, in general. And brains are not the kind of thing for which you can separate what they do from what they are. So just to, just to wind this up a bit, I, as you as you surely know, Ray Kurzweil had an updated version of his book, The Singularity is Near. And guess what the new title is called? Well, it's Nearer. It's uh, Nearer. The Golden Gate Bridge made out of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> the Parmigiano Bridge. Uh, it's called The Singularity is Nearer. Oh, wow. And, <laughs> how many focus groups did he go through for that? <laughs> Thank you.